The Event Tech Podcast is brought to you by Event Hero. All of the event management software features in the world are worthless if they don't easily integrate with your registration system and other systems you need to make your event happen the way you want it to. Stop making superhuman effort and start using your superpowers. Event Hero provides features you need, like check-ins, lead retrieval, analytics, and alerts, all seamlessly integrated with your favorite registration system and other back-end tools. To learn more and to get started, visit eventhero.io. Welcome to the Event Tech Podcast. I'm John Federico, your host and executive producer, or as most of you know me, uh, I'm the guy who turns the knobs and hosts the shows. But really, I'm the guy who finds the great guests. I hunt for guests worldwide uh, on the subject of event tech and related things. Um, and today, of course, is no exception. Um, but before we get into bit down to business, a uh, little housekeeping. So uh, let's see, you might be uh, listening to us at a pair of earbuds. You might be mowing your lawn or you might be uh, at the gym or maybe on a subway commuting. That's great. Um, you probably found us on iTunes, maybe even Google Play, the Google Play, uh, pod, new, the new podcast uh, store on Google Play. That would be great. When you reach your destination or you're done trimming your lawn or whatever you're doing, um, I would really appreciate it if you would head on over to iTunes or Google Play and, and give us a few stars. If you like five stars, five are good. Uh, a review would be nice too. Um, if you can't give me five stars, let us know here. I'm John at eventhero.io. Send me an email and tell me what I can do next time to earn your very important five stars. Um, otherwise, you know, feel free to leave as many as you like, leave a comment, etc. If you see me waving right here uh, at you on screen, that's probably because you found us on YouTube or maybe you visited the Event Hero blog. Um, that's great. Um, Feel free to leave a comment, uh, not on YouTube, of course, as everyone knows, I turn them off over there because people are nuts. Um, but if you're on our blog uh, and you found this, uh, feel free to leave a comment uh, for me or for Steven and uh, both, either of us will jump in to, uh, I just gave away my guest, either of us will jump in uh, to, uh, into the conversation. So we'd appreciate that. Uh, and since I've already let the cat out of the bag, at least part of the way, let's do it. Let's, 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 let's introduce our guest for today. Um, today, joining me from the Netherlands uh, is Stephen Wickle. Stephen is the CEO of, the, of Future of Events, uh, a great, amazing conference, huge conference that's coming up uh, in August uh, of this year, next month. Uh, so not too long from now. Stephen, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, John, for having me. Stephen, this is a this is a new conference. It's and and I have to say, congratulations! You've really, uh, you know, you've got a a great group of of uh, presenters and sponsors, and everyone is doing their best. I feel to to really, people are excited. I guess is what I want to say. But this is your first event, so how did you even think to? Why did you create this conference? Like, where did it come from, and how did you get so much buzz so quickly? Well. Um First of all, I, I used to work, uh, uh, well, no, I, did, I used to work as a PCO and um, this company went bankrupt and then I uh, was looking around for uh, uh, an, a company that, uh, like a recruitment company or something like that, that could handle my account. Uh, I used to be a PCO for 12 years and uh, I was looking around and here in uh, Europe mainland, uh, there wasn't anybody. So I started uh, my recruitment. Um, then from uh, my recruitment, we of course interviewed a lot of people, and uh, well, uh, when we spoke to uh, applicants who came for uh, different jobs in the mice industry, we always asked them, "So, how do you develop yourself?" And uh, now this was an interesting part because when you leave school and you did your, I don't know, your university event management course, um, that's about it there is no uh, education after you left school. And I was kind of shocked. I was like, okay, so, so how, how do we get new IDs? How do we get fresh IDs? I mean, when, when companies called us for, yeah, we're looking for a new senior event manager, but he has to, ha he has to be creative. Right. Well, in an industry that, that 
you know, doesn't develop themselves uh, um, by structure of organizing events. Um, that was pretty difficult, but, um, you know, um, uh, when we when we sat uh, sat down with the team, we said, you know, maybe um, it's not a bad idea if we organize something ourselves, because at uh, certain uh, global events, you hear a lot of workshops and presentations that always have those two phrases, which are buy my book or hire me, and uh, we we kind of like to stay away from that because you know. If I, if I wanted to buy your book, then uh, I already did. And uh, now I just want to hear, you know, I want to do the cherry picking. Uh, I want to, you know, uh, um, listen uh, to all kinds of new technologies and, and new ways to deliver content and, and so on. So um, because, uh, quite frankly, um, if you, how, how old do you think um, the next best thing of, uh, uh, within the event industry, which will be TED or TEDx. How, how old do you think that is? Uh, great question. So TED and TEDx, uh, what, 15 years maybe? Well, it was founded in uh, 1984. So, um, oh, that's right. okay. so that's about uh, 35 years ago. And from that point till now, nothing changed in delivering content uh, in a uh, okay, you've got your hybrids, you've got your webcast, you got your you know yeah, but it doesn't change a, a, a meeting or a conference um, because you know it's all kind of tweaked and adjusted, and then we call it new. So at future events, we decided you know what, let's do something completely new. Um, let's go uh, and dive in deep in technology and uh, really uh, have a look to, uh, uh, as a whole business um, in how we should uh, uh, work in the future and where, where our goals, where our, our challenges and, and so on. So, um, and all together that makes uh, future events. Wow. So, and there's much more than technology though. I mean, there's, I mean technology is a big part of the show, but, but there's, it's, it's really only one component. Um, I see uh, event technology as a container phrase, uh, meaning um, technology can be um, an app, but it can also be something um, uh, like a product I like, uh, which is Flogo, which is uh, helium, water, and soap, steered uh, very fast, and then uh, um, you can get all kinds of, uh, well, biodegradable uh, balloons, which is great. Just type in uh, FL. Will you do it? Will you publish it on your web? Oh, yeah, it's already in my, it's already in my show notes. Uh, oh, and that's okay. soap. I didn't realize that's made from soap? It's hand soap. Oh, that's great. All right, so you guys, so for those listening, you have to check it out. It's called, I'll have links in the show notes. It's called Flogos. And you can create these logos uh, using soap and helium. I just found out it was soap. And they just float away, and it's just your logo, your or whatever it might be, uh, just you know, outside or I guess you could even do it inside, although it'd be a little messy. Uh, just well, with helium. Around. With helium, you want to be uh, uh, careful. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> with helium, you want to be careful. But I'll include that in the show notes. So, so, the, so, Flogo, uh, they're going to be there. Who is it? Global Special Effects. So they're going to be at the show as well. And that's not the tech we're always talking about, right? We're always talking about information technology and beacons and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. What other types of tech are going to be there? Uh, well, if you are into robotics, uh, uh, we have the, uh, a great bar, which is called Make a Shaker. Uh, fi you'll find it on uh, uh, John's uh, uh, website as well. Um, and that's... Um, you know, how dull uh, uh, your event might be if you bring in this machine. Um, uh, for sure, people will be talking for years about it. It's your next nipple gate, for example. So, uh, uh, you know, and, um, and, and that's the beauty of uh, uh, technology. Um, in a world where we live in, in the event industry, we get thousands of uh, 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 communication lines where, um, you know, um, all kinds of new products are uh, uh, thrown uh, at you via newsletters or uh, uh, whatever. And we just uh, scanned the, uh, the globe 
and really uh, try to find the really uh, cool stuff that you can actually use. And uh, that will uh, bring, that's all brought together at our exhibition. Well, I just want to point out because if there's, if, all right, if there's any reason to go, if there's really one reason to go to future of events, well, besides the fact that I'll be there, but in all, all, all kidding aside, so Maker Shaker is the world's first robotic bar system. Bar, as in booze, people. We're talking about robots that make booze. Yeah. Um, I, I, I can't wait to see this in action. Uh, now, you, yeah. you can see something on their website, but I, it's not going to be, in my opinion, I can't imagine it, it's, it's not going to compare to actually seeing it in person. So uh, sure. I'm looking forward to that. I like, a good, I like a good martini, so we'll see <laughs> how well it does. Well, you order it by your own phone, so, um, you know, um, it's very, very easy uh, to use. Um, but, uh, you know, and, and, and that's what I, what I meant with container phrase. I mean, uh, the other day I was in Israel and um, where they have a huge startup community uh, within technology. And uh, over there I held the uh, first uh, consumer uh, 3D 360 camera. Uh, you get a, a something comparable to the uh, Oculus Rift uh, with it. And um, the camera is, well, for those people who still smoke, uh, it's like two packages of cigarettes. Um, and, you know, it stitches it's, uh, uh, all the images. And it means that if you are walking with this camera uh, around, it doesn't matter how you make your picture because it's already there in 360. And for if you're... Uh, friends or your relatives are coming you just put the, the glasses on and they can have exactly the same experience as you have and this is the first uh, uh, consumer camera and it's only uh, I, th I thought it was eight hundred dollars uh, which is very affordable and 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 that's uh, with that's the fun thing about technology the way I see it I mean you can do so many cool things and you just have to be aware of what's going on and uh, within the event technology. Um, I think that we are coming to a m mature phase. Uh, uh, in the early days, it was seen as a fast sugar. Uh, and and uh, event technology, like an app or something, you know, it makes this shiny look on your event, but it didn't deliver any content. Um, well, okay, the app with the program and maybe a bit of speaker bio, but um, at these days, uh, more and more apps, something like uh, My Fair Tool, uh, which is a beautiful app. Um, the app is all about uh, uh, making sure that your booth at an exhibition um, is profitable and it measures actually, I think it's every hour uh, on how well you did. And it's with eye beacons, it's with a, a sales uh, follow-up, it's with uh, lead retrieval, it's with everything. And, um, you know, um, making, uh, uh, or you can now, with uh, MyFairTool, you can actually show your management um, that uh, uh, the booth was successful or not. Uh, and you've got hard evidence. Um, same thing with uh, uh, iBeacons. Um, I think that uh, uh, the iBeacon, in my eyes, is one of the best things ever invented for the event industry. Uh, because if in combination with an app, if you drive up to a venue, and um, you know we're going to do this at uh, future events as well, we're going to try it. Um, that means that if you um, ever been to San Diego, to the convention center? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Okay. Yes. So, uh, how about if you pass on, uh, um, uh, if you pass the, Hi the Hyatt, you know, the two brown towers, um, if you pass that, then all of a sudden above the highway, it will say, hi, John, good you're here. Uh, please take entrance number five. Uh, you, so, you don't have to wait or it's a VIP uh, or whatsoever. Um, so, okay, kind of amazed, but you take uh, entrance five, uh, you go in there and at the... Uh, at the, at the lever, um, it will say, uh, John, uh, parking spot 32 is uh, available for you. And so you drive up and, well, it's free. How is that possible? <laughs> so you park your car there. You get out of your car. Your app sends uh, the door where you come uh, into, the, um, into the main building. 
And um, meanwhile, uh, this app is also signaling me because uh, I, um, you know, I invited you um, uh, that you are about two and a half minutes away from registration. How would you feel if with that notification, I walk up to the uh, uh, reception, uh, to the registration, and I will be there with open arms saying, John, how good it is to see you. And you'll be like, okay, so how does he know I'm here? <laughs> well, it's eye beacons. It's eye beacons with geofencing, geopositioning, and an uh, app that works multiple ways. And sometimes people ask me, so, so that, that's garage system, how does that work? Well, here in Europe, we have a lot of uh, um, uh, parking spaces where they have those uh, green and red lights above a parking space. And it's red mm -hmm. if it's full and it's green if it's not. Well, that works on an uh, 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 API, which you can connect to your app, which you can connect to the iBeacon, and then the circle is round again. So, um, you know, and this is uh, same with waiting list. Um, I, and and I, I had this conversation uh, the other day with uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Jules Solaris, um, that he said, you know, um, how many people actually use Twitter? Uh, now he said, how many people uh, use um, uh, a hashtag? And of course, most said, yeah, we, we use a, a hashtag, okay. But what do you actually do with uh, uh, social media? Do you use it as a mass communication or not? And then it was only one hand out of a crowd of 300 people. So, right. you know, it, it's, um, I think, and I think you mentioned that uh, in uh, previous shows as well and other guests you had, the minute you start with uh, event technologies, uh, please understand what you're doing and, and use it to the full extent. You'd better have one product that you uh, uh, stretch for the entire 100% than having uh, five different things that don't communicate with each other because it looks stupid. Um, yeah, and then other things we're going to do at our event. We're going to live stream uh, on VR, so you can uh, turn on your uh, VR glasses. Oh, wow. Sit, sit, sit wherever you are in the world, um, and you'll get a live stream through uh, VR, so it's like you're there. Uh, so you'll uh, be using a, a 3D camera to, to, to stream, and then you'll be able to consume that using yeah. any supported uh, three, uh, VR system yeah. or VR, VR uh, headset. If you uh, tilt your head uh, to the ceiling, you'll see the actual ceiling. If you look left, you see actual people sitting left of you and right, of course. Uh, but meanwhile, uh, you can just watch our keynotes and, 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 uh, and, and, and workshop uh, uh, presenters. And, you know, um, it's like you're, you're there. The only issue that we have to fight with uh, VR is talking back. Um, if you have a hologram, if you have a VR, you cannot talk back. You can hear everything. You can see everything. Well, smell is always difficult, but um, <laughs> no, as long as there's a glass plate in between, smell is an issue. Um, but uh, on the other hand, um, I think that the, the first person that uh, actually develops VR that you can talk back, oh man, he's a millionaire. Oh, yeah, yeah. Are you gonna, so are you going to have any sort of audience response tool for the... For the um uh, for the people who are who are participating in VR, uh, yeah, we've got of course uh, social media uh, channels. Sure, sure. Uh, um, and of course, there are uh, text boxes and uh, uh, that you can work with. Um, but other than that, there's not much that has been developed for it. So mm -hmm. it's kind of kind of difficult to have that. Yeah, but but to your point. Um, you know, social media works just fine. Twitter, I mean, Twitter with a hashtag works just fine. You could use something like, like tweet chat, uh, which automatically manages the hashtag during those communications, which is nice. Um, so what do you, so this, you know, this is like a pretty tech heavy crowd, right? They're expecting things. What, mm -hmm. what did you have to do to pull together, you know, all of these different technologies? And, and frankly, like for instance, what are you doing for, to manage all your social media in real time? That seems like a lot of work. Uh, to be honest, we have a team of uh, uh, 25 people uh, working on that. Uh, we Not have surprising. A okay. Yeah. Uh, we have a team of uh, 12 people working on the app. Um, we have uh, 
Um, you know, it's, it's a lot of uh, uh, networks that we uh, uh, connect to each other. And uh, then we have these uh, uh, informal sessions and we talk to, to each other as in, okay, so what would be really cool? And then it's like, oh, I know somebody who knows that. I know somebody who can do that. Right. And as long as there's an uh, API, you can connect a lot of things to each other. And, um, but that's also the most difficult part in our industry, which is working together. Uh, yes. Uh, absolutely. That's, that's been a big sticking point for a lot of people, especially me. Uh, you it's may know I've been hammering on that issue for a long time. The it's, biggest enemy we have in the industry is jealousy. Everybody's holding their cards to their chest. Like, I can't see you. you know? I, I, couldn't, I couldn't have said it better. Yeah. Um, and, and the, um, you know, it's that openness that's going to make it better for the organizers who are the customers and sure. for the attendees who, and the exhibitors who are also constituents and customers. Uh, mm -hmm. And so all this, this, or this hoarding of data and, and keeping everything in silos just makes things difficult. And, it, and yeah. frankly, it, it limits innovation. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah. kudos to you, though, because it sounds like this, the systems that you're putting in place, especially with iBeacons, are going to be very well, well integrated. I'm excited to see that. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, uh, we, uh, we are so convinced about the success of uh, this show um, that we are the first show worldwide in any industry that will do a um, no cure, no pay. Uh, uh, how do you call that? Rules? So if you're not happy about your stand, oh, wow. you can get your money back. Wow, that's tremendous. I had no idea. Yeah, and you know, um, with the technologies uh, of these days, it's really simple because um, I can pull up with the eye beacons and heat map. So if somebody comes up to me and says, hey, Stephen, I thought it was a crap show. I didn't like it. Never, see, never, see, uh, never met anybody. It was really useless, okay? And then I pull up the heat map because the iBeacon will register who, how many people passed. It's all anonymous, the, uh, uh, privacy issues, those are all tackled. Sure, sure. But I can uh, pull up a heat map saying, well, on the second day, you had uh, uh, between 12 and uh, 4, uh, 1,000 people passing your booth. So as an event organizer, I delivered. I can't help that your product is shit. I can't help. I can't help. I can't help that you were busy phoning other people. I can't help that you were talking to people you already know. Um, understaffed, uneducated uh, uh, booth staff. That's not my issue. My issue is I deliver you the people, and and with that, you know, um, I think that more and more uh, event organizers. I really hope they. Uh, you know, adopt it and, and, and really uh, go with that as well because you get more qualified or high quality um, uh, events because, you know, everybody's always looking for uh, getting money back, et cetera. Um, and they will try. But, uh, uh, you know, a uh, stand holder or somebody with a booth will never win from uh, a heat map because it's evidence. And yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, it's it's a pretty easy thing, but it's also technology, and and that's what I meant with uh, uh, event technology is really growing up. It is. It's it's um it's and, and it's well, frankly, it's great to see, but it's no longer just the wow factor, right? It's no longer just uh you know. I mean, remember not too long ago, like you know, pre iPhone days, you know, you'd walk in and there'd be a touch screen and people yeah. would go, ooh and you know, but that, that was all well and good, depending on the application uh, and what the goal was for the event. But yeah, think it is growing up. It is it is taking a lot of things that we're used to in the uh, online, in the virtual world, and and making them and making them happen in physical space. And I, I think that's going to change quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. No, I think that um, uh, technologies uh, like VR, when you can actually talk back. I mean, the hologram. Yeah, you know, that's already gone. Um, I mean, um, how many people in the event industry actually used it? Three. I know that Cisco won. Uh, uh, Cisco had one. 
at their Cisco Live, uh, maybe one or two others, but that's it. Well, uh, price drives a lot of these things. Uh, yeah, are, are, true, uh, true. And so, I, I, and I think they might even be there. Have you seen Ventana? 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 I, I, yeah. I, I think Ashley, is Ashley, gonna, Ashley Crowder, is she going to be there? I think she is. Yes, she is, yes. Okay, and so they've got, they've done, uh, you know, they, they've produced a hologram, and you say, well, that's great, but they've produced a hologram system, which costs like a tenth of what uh, the Cisco version may have cost. So as the cost of these things comes down and the setup becomes easier, I think your vision of what, you know, what you're describing about the hologram and the questions and all that, it's all going to come together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and uh, I'm very much looking forward to, uh, to hear what they think that will be a hologram 3.0. Uh, because like you said, in the early days, 80,000 uh, USD for 10 minutes uh, um, with this special foil and um, um, the, uh, um, the projector, etc. cetera. Um, it, it, was, it was insane so much money. But, yeah. um, you know, um, no, we tried and um, uh, we're going to do that uh, next year um, when we'll, uh, we'll go around with future events. Um, that uh, we want to amaze people by putting, giving them a, a VR uh, glasses, and that you are dancing. Of, uh, you're, you're walking into a, a room, and uh, you see in, in your glasses people dance, and and there's live music on stage, etc. And then at a certain point, we'll ask people, okay, take off your glasses, and that same people that were around you. Uh, in your glasses are actually around you now and then we'd like to uh, show the world how far we are with uh, uh, virtual technology because your brains cannot cope with it that from one moment to the other uh, what you saw <laughs> in your on your uh, on your phone or on your uh, in your glasses um, is actually the truth and um, I think that's uh, uh, you know, where, where we should go to within the event industry that you cannot see whether it's live or semi-live. Yeah, it would, it provides, it, it is a much better experience than what we call hybrid events today, right? Hybrid yeah. events today are talking yeah. heads, right? A camera, yeah. you know, yeah. whereas VR will completely change that. It will, it will be much closer to, at least okay. I think, to, to the actual, yeah. you know, participation. That's there's this company in England, um, and of course, I'm like you, a, a dictionary for uh, uh, cool stuff. Um, but um, uh, in, in England, there's this company, they make gloves that you can actually see your own hands um, uh, with it when you wear a, a VR glasses. Um, ah, okay. And can you imagine what that can do for retail? that you actually um, walk into a, a store, uh, uh, grab uh, milk, uh, grab, uh, 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 I don't know, candy for your kids, and then you put it for your uh, ID in a basket, and then you pay, and then you click at, uh, I don't know, four o'clock uh, delivery time, and well, it actually is there at four o'clock. Uh, and you really helped, had this feeling that you were uh, uh, shopping because you know you were holding things you put things in the basket or in the cart so what what's the, what's the difference um i think that Holo, uh, hololens does some great stuff too um it needs to be developed more but um, it will get there too well, hololens so that you're yeah that's the microsoft technology for those yeah. listening and uh it's it's not virtual reality it's it's augmented reality as they call yeah. it right so yep. it actually, it, it puts, uh, so for those listening for who don't know it, it puts objects, virtual objects in your physical space, at least by when you wear these, these glasses. Um, yeah. It's pretty amazing. And you should check out, I'll put that in the show notes as well. I'm going to make a note here. You should check that out. It's Microsoft HoloLens. So yep. sure. uh, funny you should say that though, HoloLens, the big, the big rage, especially for the past week has been Pokemon Go. Have you, have you seen it yet? Have you played it yet? 
I think that my my kids are too young for that. They're four or six. So. Okay, well, forget your kids. I'm 40. This is my birthday. I'm 46 years old today. And I was playing with it. And it's great. Right. And it's, it's augmented reality, very mm -hmm. much like the HoloLens, only it's not on your face. So mm -hmm. you hold up your camera and you go searching. So you go try to capture Pokemon. People okay. are going crazy for it. Crazy. Really? Yes, okay. it's, you should try it. It's a lot of fun. Um, I will. Oh, people are walking around, and I, you know, obviously, I'm I'm originally from New York City, and all my friends are saying, "Yep, there are just people walking around Manhattan uh, with their phones out, catching mm -hmm. Pokemon." And so you yeah. see it everywhere. It's 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 amazing. But similar technology, right? You're not wearing it on your face, but it is augmented, and you're you're finding you know virtual Pokemon in the real world. This is uh -huh. all amazing stuff. Do you want to see something really cool? How are we gonna travel in the future? Um, April twenty sixth. Uh, this French guy um, launched uh, the uh, Flyboard Air. No, how do you call that? Uh, wakeboard Air? I don't know, Frank uh, uh, Zapatos. Okay. And, and um, it's very likely that he will demonstrate it uh, uh, with us. You know uh, where this hose, uh, um, when, when you're on the lake, this guy also makes uh, this hose where uh, uh, the water will uh, 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 you know, uh, make you fly above water. Yes, I've seen those. Okay. Now he's got one on air. And he actually flew in the south of France, uh, close to 300 meters um, on air. He had just two snow boots or ski boots or... Uh, 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 whatever you call it, um, and there were two uh, jet engines underneath, and it was for real. He's actually in the World Guinness Book of Records. That's great. Yeah, I think I saw something about that. That's going to be amazing. The challenges have always been, uh, you know, safety, but also fuel and the ability to control it and all of that. And it sounds like he's gotten a lot of those. Uh, he's overcome a lot of those challenges, which is it's going to be interesting to watch. Yeah, but you mentioned uh, uh, New York. In New York, people walking with their phone in front of their eyes. I think there are a lot more people on the streets of uh, New York than in the air. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, there are. <laughs> I, I I consider that a lot. Uh, I consider New York a lot more dangerous than being above water and flying a bit. <laughs> no, but um, you know the the cool thing is uh, um, if you have something like that, if you bring your special guest in, like uh, 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 with uh, this machine. You know, uh, despite the fact that he uh, uh, must have a certain, uh, or that he must he must be anxious to do it, um, I think that uh, it's great. People will remember that, and um, that's where everything uh, for future fans stands for. It's about experience. It's about um, engagement. It's about event technology in the most wide, widest, broadest form. Uh, you can write the words event technology. Got it. And, I, and that's exactly, now I understand what you mean by container phrase. And that makes, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Excellent. Well, Stephen, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. I know it's late there, uh, late, late in your day. Um, if, uh, if my audience wants to reach out and thank you, how can they do that? Um, well, we've got a website, which is called uh, futureofevents.org. Of course, that'll be in the show notes. Uh, and if you want to uh, drop me a line at Stephen, S-T-E-V-E-N, um, at futureevents.org. And I'll be happy to share any information. And um, I can't say now, but we are very uh, hard. Uh, we're working very hard on bringing the show to uh, the United States as well in 2017. Oh, wow. All right, great. And just so we're clear, I'll, again, I'll include this in the show notes, but for people listening, the dates are in Amsterdam this year. The dates are what? August 22 to 24. Okay. It's in Amsterdam. Um, we cannot guarantee you uh, uh, rain, uh, but it is the Netherlands. So, you know, chances are. No. <laughs> it's going to be great weather. We got a, a, we've got uh, uh, trend tours where you can actually uh, uh, have a drink at, in the office of uh, event startups and uh, all kinds of uh, other things. It's going to be huge, and I'm really looking forward to meet as much people as 
possible. One last thing, um, if I may say, you're also the first show that will ha have on your badge only your first and last name. Because I hate this uh, when people start looking at your belly button, whether you're interested or, or interesting or not. And we, I, I think that's really sad. So, you know, let's talk to each other. Let's, let's make the world, uh, the event industry, a fun place to be at and, uh, and not uh, uh, pull each other's jacket as in, well, I think you're interesting. Oh, really? Because I could have written everything on my badge if I want to. So, yeah. I love it. All right. So lot, lots of, lots of new things at future yeah. events. So that's, and that, that's what it's all about. And, and something as simple as a badge is going to be, uh, will, will even be new. That's great. Yeah. Thank you, Stephen. Look forward to seeing you uh, next month. And for those of you who are listening in, uh, thanks for joining us. I appreciate that. Once again, when you stop, whatever you're doing, uh, head on over to iTunes or Google Play. Give us a few stars. Give us a review. And of course, you can always reach out to me with questions or comments. I'm John at eventhero.io. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>